Hello and welcome. My name is Steve Woody and in this series we're going to be talking about Medieval Dynasty. Now this is a survival stroke sandbox story game with an economy builder built in with base building. Uh, there's a definite twist in this game as you progress from early to late game which is really nice. It's built really well, there's a lot of good elements to it. Um, but getting started can be a little bit challenging so this is a new player guide if you're playing this for the first time or just seeing it. Now the game's been out since 2021, so it's been out for a little while, but it's just recently had an update, which has kind of made it a bit more appealing to people. The community's just hit 20,000 members on Discord, so it's kind of growing now, and I thought it was a good time to put out this video series uh, in case you're looking at the game or want to start playing it. So the first thing we're going to do is hit New Game, and you can see here there are two options. You can start the game or customise the game. Now, you might want to do several playthroughs of this game, and I would recommend in your first playthrough not to get too attached. I think this is a game that you can make mistakes, um, but you can learn from it. Now, I'm not going to give you the answer to just have the most uh, amazing start straight away. This is a game that you should really enjoy, and, and a part of that enjoyment is definitely through the, the playing of the game and the grinding, rather than the kind of cheating and getting to the, the end result. So when you click customize game, you'll see you can change things. You can have unlimited HP, you can have unlimited stamina. I wouldn't turn these on. I think it takes away from the gameplay element itself. Also unlimited carry weight, etc, etc. Again, these are things I would not touch. I would leave them as they are. Building limits, taxes, length of season. I would leave everything as it is. Everything should be as it is. If you leave it all there and don't touch anything on here, and just press X if you have to reset it all to uh, default settings. And then we're going to click start game. So everything is a standard. Now, I'm not going to dive too deep into the story mode. That's something that you can experience when you play the game yourself. Um, but there are... I used to have a simple life. Whatever needed doing around the farm, I'd do it. <laughs> Being the eldest son, it's tough. But at least we had a living and our plates were never empty. Then, the war came. I lost everything overnight. The last thing I remember is father pushing me away, yelling for me to run, to live. At first, I didn't know what to do. Then, I remembered. A story my mother once told me. A story about my uncle, Jordan. He made a modest fortune up north, in a peaceful valley far away from the war. For weeks I held on to that thought, until the valley from my mother's stories. I could see it. This is where I can start a new life. Okay, so that's the introduction. There's been a war, you've left the war, you're now searching for a new life. Now, there's many things you can do in this game. Um, I'm going to talk you through what I recommend is the best version if you're just getting started. Um, but obviously you can play this however you want. But when you start, you'll spawn in, and the first thing you're going to see is that you've got a lot of things available to you. Bottom left is the very obvious uh, stats bar. Here we can see your stamina is in green, your health is in red, your food is in yellow and your water is in blue. Self-explanatory there. Bottom right are the items that you're holding. At the moment we have nothing so we can just punch and block. You can zoom in and zoom out with the middle mouse wheel so that you can get a full view of the game. You can see what clothes you're wearing and also what's going on. Now, when you start a game, um, there will be RNG that will take effect. For example, there could be a cart just here behind you as you start. There could be a cart here. It's not spawned for me, and so sometimes things will spawn, sometimes they won't. If they spawn, they'll always spawn in the same place, but they don't always spawn on every game. So some things that you might see on my playthrough, they may not be in yours. And that's fine, it's just the way that the game is. So 
What we're going to do right now is we're just going to start moving down this path. And you'll notice as you start to interact with things, you can pick them up. So in the top left, it tells me I've discovered an animal spot. That's because I've seen a crow. So somewhere in my, um, in my surroundings, there's a crow. I can pick up a stick. I've now got a stick. Um, you can pick up anything that's on the floor, sticks, rocks, or there's also going to be um, straw. Uh, your three main uh, things that you'll pick up. But also, you'll be able to pick up other things like medicine. You'll be able to pick up ingredients. There's a lot of other stuff that you can do. And so, the idea behind this game really is to start gathering resources, but not too much because you've got weight limits. And if you just start picking everything up that you see, you're soon going to become encumbered and you're going to have a, a you're going to have trouble walking. So the first thing we're just going to do is just walk down here. We can see there we go. Look, there's uh, birds, there's rabbits, so things that we can see. And we're going to walk to the edge of this opening here. And you can start to get an idea of the land. All of this you can traverse. You can walk around all of this land. Um, but for now, we're just going to walk down here. Now, there are a few buttons that you'll need to know as you play this game. M is for the map. So that's the most obvious one where we can, we can see the map in the game. And you can kind of get a feel for the area. So it's, a, it's quite a large map to walk across, but it's also not too big, which is quite nice. Also, when we click on M for the map, you can see here there's a few things. For example, the temperature, the day, the time, uh, what season we're in. So there's a day and night cycle, plus there's a seasonal cycle. You need to bear that in mind. What year we're in, who is the king, and, and what our relationship is to the factions. Um, so that's the first thing. And now you're going to see across the top here, there are different menus. So talking about the map first and the filters, where you can filter through different things. Your inhabitants, if you have a wife, if you have a child. Again, this is about a dynasty, so we'll get into that later. Any quests that you're doing? Any buildings that you have? Uh, any houses that you have? Um, any extraction that you've set up? Any hunting? Uh, farming? Animal husbandry? Production? Services? Storage? Traps? And then we can see wildlife. And the wildlife, now you can see, as we've started to move through the area we're starting to discover wildlife. And this will populate as you start to move through these areas. So we're gonna go back to the main filter, and that is the map overview. Now we're not gonna go through everything else right at this second. Uh, we're just gonna move down a little bit further, and we will start to uh, explore things. We're gonna pick up some sticks, because we're gonna need these. All right, there's a bird there, we're gonna ignore that. And the first thing it says is starting a new life. Talk to the Castleton. So what we have to do is come down here. There are a lot of different places and there's signposts to each of them. You can always use the map as well. So if I press M, you can see I'm here with this triangle. I'm currently at a crossroads. I want to go down to Castovia because this is where my alert is. And you can tell an alert when there's something to do because it will have these little spikes around it. So there's two different types of question mark, uh, or to, uh, uh, exclamation mark. There's kind of a faded one and there's a brighter one with these coming off of them. And you can see the difference. This is a new quest, and this is the current quest target. So we can change the quests in the journal. If I click on journal, uh, here, if you have another quest, you can click on it. And you can see here, I've just removed this. If I double click on it again, I'm now tracking this quest. I can also do that by pressing the F key. Um, and so if I track it, it will show up in the map. And this says, when the war came, I lost everything. This is what we saw at the start. So it tells me uh, my objective, what I need to do, and what the reward is. So max development stage, I will get a, a hermitage, which will give me building limit one. So this is what I need to do. And in order to increase your building limit, you need to progress through the main storyline. So there's certain things that you can do in this game, which I probably wouldn't recommend at the start. Some people might just want to go off and build a, a settlement. But until you've kind of unlocked certain things, it's it's kind of not worth doing that. You need to progress through the storyline first. There's a few things I'm going to help you with. And throughout this video series, which is going to be about 30 minute videos each, we're just going to kind of progress through together and, and cover this. So this is really just about the, the introduction stage. All right, so you can see there's people here. You can talk to all of these people. And if I look at the, uh, before I come into here, if I look on the top, the map, uh, the, the compass, it tells me here I'm facing north. But you can also see all of these icons. So right here you can see a bag. A bag is a vendor. This is somebody that you can approach and they will sell you things. Now if I have a look here, 
there is a vendor and he's right here and he has a, a kind of cattle. So there's a bucket, a cattle, there's different things. And these are different types of vendors. So if I talk to Sobermere, I have a lot of different options, things I can go through. And the only thing I'm going to show you right now is show me your wares. If I click on this, it opens up the menu. This is my inventory. This is my name. I'm Rasimir. Uh, this is my current inventory. This is Sobermere's inventory. This is my budget, which is 50 coins. And this is his budget, which is 1,415 coins. Now I can sell him things or I can buy things from him. And these are just, uh, this is an overall inventory. And then I can break it down. So this is going to be inventory, my tools, my clothes, my consumables, my crafting, and miscellaneous items or everything. Same here. So we can see that this is a person who has consumables and crafting and they're limited in supply right now. So just bearing that in mind, we can see at the top when we come into a village who we want to interact with and there's lots of different things. But for now, we're just gonna follow this contract sign because that's what we wanna do. We wanna go and see, um, we wanna go in, and, and see our first quest and, and they walk around as well so they're not always in the same place, which is nice. It means you have gotta kind of find them as you, as you look around, so. Okay, he's over here. There we go. So this is the person we're looking for. You can kind of see that uh, is above his head. And you can see as well, if I hover over, not only do I have the contract icon, um, but I also have the uh, the quest uh, target icon. So we're going to talk. And again, I'm not going to go through the story mode, um, but basically you'll be able to read what he says. And then these are your options for replies. Now, some replies that you give will have some impact. Some will give you uh, choices, but nothing too bad. So it doesn't matter. You can scroll through them quickly. Also tells you their name and their age. So we're just going to uh, we're going to skip through this. I'm not going to go too much into detail in the story because uh, I don't want to spoil that for you. Um, but this is something that you can do in your own time. OK. So that noise that you just heard means you've achieved something and also now we can see it's telling us the new chapter that we have. So this is telling us what we need to do and it's telling us we need to collect resources. Okay, And if you watch the video it'll actually show you where the resources are. Stones on the floor, we can see those. Uh, you'll see um, sticks, which they're, they're all around, sticks are very common. And then by the water there are reeds. So it does tell you if you pay attention, these are the three things you're going to need. So we can close this or we can go to knowledge. So if we go to our knowledge base, which is an option by pressing tab, this will open up the knowledge base, which is everything we need to know about the game. So this is all about the quests. Uh, this is all about the, the different um, the items. And this is all about your tools, everything that's available, clothes, consumables, crafting, and miscellaneous. Now, I'm not going to go through this, but if you ever need help, the knowledge is a great place to come to get that information and to understand things. So anyway, we're going to come out, and we now have a new quest, which is Chapter 1, A New Beginning. And it tells us we need to collect 10 sticks and 2 stones. So we can just come out of this area here. There's a lot more we can do inside. We'll do that later. For now, we're just going to look around, and we're going to pick up sticks if we see them. And we're going to pick up stones if we see them. And you might have to walk around a little bit, but not too far. You come out and you can basically do an entire circle of this village. And you'll be able to find these. So they'll all be around here somewhere. Later on, we'll make it a lot easier to find. I tend to go down towards the water. I find it's quite easy to find them there. Uh, sticks are very easy. Stones are a little bit harder. And reeds a little bit harder still. So now we've got tree cutting. So, to cut down a tree, we need to have an axe. So, it can be bought or crafted in the handcrafting section. Now, as I talk through this, there's going to be a lot to uncover in this first video. So, I kind of want to walk through this slowly so you understand it because this, this means everything. Once you get this, this, this will help you. So, what we're going to do right now is we're going to press the middle mouse wheel and that opens up all of our quick slot items. This is one all the way through to eight. Okay, so we can equip things, but in order to equip them, we first need to um, craft them. So there are two main menus that you need. There is the tab key, uh, which will bring up the 
knowledge, or you can press M, which brings up the map. There's I, which brings up inventory. So all of these buttons, they bring up different things, but the tab key specifically brings up the last thing you was on. So if I was on map and I press tab, if I press tab again, it opens up the map. So the tab key brings up the last screen you was on. So for example, if I was on journal, I press tab. If I press tab again, I'm still in journal. So I could press I to go directly to the inventory or I could press all of the other keys as well. So there's I, there's M. Um, I don't know the keys for the rest, but you get the idea. So I just use tab. It takes me to the last screen I was in and then I use the top to be able to go through. So let's have a very quick look at these. We have inventory. This shows you all of your inventory. This is overall, tools, clothes, consumables, crafting, miscellaneous. Okay, and we'll talk back, we'll talk through all of this later. On the right hand side is you and your age, and these are all of the items that you have equipped right now in, on your person. Also your quick slots, which are the same as when you press the middle mouse wheel, that is what is available. Then we have our health, our food, our water, if we're poisoned, if we're intoxicated, because yes, you can get drunk. The temperature tolerance based on the seasons, something to bear in mind. We have three day seasons. It will soon be winter. We have to prepare. Then we have heat protection, cold protection, and dirtiness, which is a very interesting stat, which we'll talk about. So we'll go through the rest of these later, uh, but for now, that's the inventory slot. So what we need to do is craft. Now, the way you craft is by pressing Q. When you press Q, it will bring up this mouse wheel. Okay, so remembering now, there's kind of three keys that you need, and these are the three main keys. Tab is the main menu, Q is the building menu, and then middle mouse wheel is your, uh, your selection. Okay, so with that being said, and also, by the way, middle mouse wheel, you can press numbers one through eight to quick select. So we're gonna right now press Q, and we're gonna see this is how we can exit the menu. Then we have handcrafting, buildings, fences, gates, furniture and decoration, and roads. Now there are some items we need in furniture and decorations. I don't know why it's a bit of a poor choice of words in the menu, but it is what it is. But for now, we're gonna focus on handcrafting. And in handcrafting, when we come into here, there's a lot of options. Now some of these, we don't have enough resources, and that tells us this by this red bag. And some of them we just can't do because we're not in the right season to do it. So we can't make a snowball until it's winter. Now we've been asked to make a stone axe. It tells us in the top right hand corner. So we're going to click on this because we have enough resources. And now he's going to craft it. You'll see this. And now we have a stone axe, which has already been equipped. And if I press the middle mouse wheel, you'll see it is in slot one. So I can press one to either enable or disable it. Now that I have it, I can hit trees. And it's telling me I need to cut down five trees. It's also telling me that I need a wooden hammer and I need some straw. Now, you can do this. It's not a problem to do this. However, what I would say is if you do it, you're gonna struggle because the idea of these trees is you're gonna build a house. And you don't necessarily want to build a house right here. It's not the best spot to build a house. Not a bad spot, but it's not the best spot to build a house. So when we look on the map, and we look at where we're going to build our settlement, I'm just going to tell you straight off the bat, the best place I recommend to build is right here. This whole area here is a great place to build. You need to be near a river, you need access to resources, and you also need to be quite near to all of the settlements. So here, by this bridge, is a great place to be near the river where there are reeds. You've got the forest here where you can cut down trees, you can pick up stones. There's everything you need in this area. So if you're going to start the game, I recommend traversing up this road and cutting down the trees in this area. And also it gives us a chance to go for a little walk. So the reason I do this is because you could just chop the trees down where you start and it's possible to do that. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But yeah, the, the, the thing that I recommend is going to where you're going to build your base. Now along your travels, you're going to start to see things like this. This is a lost shipment. If we open it, there are coins. We can press F to transfer these coins. So we first click on it to highlight it. Then we press F and we can choose how many coins we want to transfer. This is 14 co uh, coins. Now we can also drag and drop them if we want to and choose the same way. 
or we can press and hold F to transfer them all in one go. So we've just acquired 14 coins. Great, that's now empty. We continue along this path. See, there's sticks and lots of other things. Again, we're not gonna worry about picking everything up because weight is gonna be a problem. Also, in this starting village where you are, you're not gonna come into any trouble. There's not gonna be anything here that's gonna bother you. Uh, you're not gonna see any bad animals. You're not gonna see any bandits. Um, at the start of the game, it's very forgiving. It gives you a chance to kind of ease into it. And so I wouldn't worry at the start too much. Now, as you can see, because I'm running, uh, my stamina is going down. And here is the bridge. This is the second bridge. There was one back there. It's the second bridge. And this is where we're going to build. So it's not very far to run, but it's definitely where I would recommend coming to cut down these trees. So you get to this signpost here. And there's actually rocks here you can pick up, which make it nice and easy. But here, here we are. So we've got a bridge there. The other bridge is back there. We know that first village is back there. And we have this area here. So I tend to build all around here, this whole area. Now you can't build on main paths. So you can't build on the main path. But where you get to this crossroad, back to the village, up the hill there, or across this way, I would say anything from this stone over here is a great place to build. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to start just chopping down trees. Now, as you hit a tree, you'll see there's a, a status to it, which is starts at 100. Do not fall on. Do not stand under the tree when it falls. It will hurt you. If it hurts you, you'll lose health. Just bear that in mind. So now we have two things. We have a tree stump and a tree. We can't do anything with a tree. We have to hit it again two more times. The first time will give us feathers and sticks. The second time will turn it into logs. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing for another tree. And I'm going to show you this time what happens if I stand underneath it so you can see. So if the tree falls, I stand underneath it. I've just lost 50% of my health. So your health is something that you have to be aware of. Um, and so as you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. Now I've got half my health. So be careful of trees. They will kill you. All right, we're going to hit it two times. All right, that's two trees that we've knocked down so far. Also, it's telling us we need water. So every time something comes up, it tells you you need it. So this is telling us how we can drink water. And I'll go through that with you in a moment. Uh, we're going to continue to hit this tree. We're going to hit five trees. So we're going to knock down five trees. And then we're simply just going to break them like this. But we're going to leave the logs. The logs will not despawn. So you don't need to worry about the logs. They will not despawn. And they won't grow back either. So later on, we can take out the tree stumps. And we can remove those. But for now, we're just going to cut down five trees. And we're going to leave the logs. Now, the reason I'm leaving the logs is because they're heavy. And the problem with this is if you pick them up, you're going to struggle to walk with them. Which brings us on to one of the first things that we want to do. We really want to increase our carrying capacity. It's a, a real challenge at the moment, our, our um, capacity, and we need to improve it. So it's telling us we need to make a wooden hammer. So in order to do that, we're going to press Q. We're going to come down here to the hand crafting and look at the wooden hammer. We need one log and 10 sticks, and it tells us we have 36 sticks. So come out of this. We're going to pick up one log. We're going to come back into that menu by pressing Q, hand crafting, and now we can make a wooden hammer. All right, so the wooden hammer now, if we want to equip it, we can press I to go to our inventory. We can either scroll down this list or we can just click on um, tools and we can see our wooden hammer. And we can drag this across and place it in our quick slot. So that's it. So now we've equipped it. You don't need to equip the simple torch. You can just press F for fire. But now we've got a stone axe and a wooden hammer. We're now started. All right, so now we need straw. Now, at this point, we've kind of started where we want to be. We want to go and get some straw. We can do that down here. And this is down by the river, which is also where you'll drink. So you just go to the water and press and hold E and you will drink. Also, as you get dirty, you just run into the river. You go deep enough and you'll clean yourself. The more you, more you do, the dirtier you'll get. Um, and so that's just something to bear in mind. Now, reeds look like this. You can see they've got these little hot dogs on the end of them. Um, you'll be able to see the reeds. And if you just walk around, you can just pick them up. 
There's lots and lots here. And so this is a great place for you to come and get reeds if you need them. And there's, as you can see, quite a lot all around the riverbed. And don't worry, uh, we're not going to take too many here, just enough to do the quest. Um, reeds are relatively light and easy to carry. So when we go back to the village, we'll look for another spot for reeds and we'll just pick up a lot of them. So we've, we've got a lot because you're, you're going to need a lot of these. These are used to... Uh, this reeds create straw. So when you pick up a reed, you get straw. And straw is what you need for your thatched roofs. Okay, so now we've got a building menu. It tells us how to build. Okay, so now we're going to close this down. And it tells us we need to build our first house. Now again, this is where it helps to be here. Because now we can build our first house. We can choose where do we want it to be. Now, you can put it wherever you want to put it. I'm going to simply um, choose an area uh, on the edge here. Again, it doesn't really matter where you want to build it. Um, but yeah, you will need your houses. So for me, I want to build it around here. So I'm going to go and press Q. But this time I'm going to come to the buildings menu. And now there's a lot of options in here. There's houses, extraction, hunting, farming, animal husbandry, production, services and storage. And we want houses and we want a simple house. And that will show us the option that we have now to build a simple house. So now we can build a house. Great. So we need to put our house down somewhere. Like we need somewhere for our house to go. And for me, I'm just going to simply put my house right here by the river. So you can have a nice house by the river. And that is going to live just there. Now what it does is it creates this kind of outline for you. It's a little bit hard if you're um, trying to line everything up and get everything perfect. There's no top-down view to be able to do that. But if you place it and go, oh, I don't actually want it there. I made a mistake. It's fine. You can remove it quite easily. Just equip your hammer and right-click. When you right-click on your hammer, you can build, repair, or destroy. If I click on destroy and then I just hit it with a hammer, it disappears. So before you build something, you can destroy it. If you've built it and you destroy it, you won't get your resources back. So again, press Q, buildings, houses, simple house. Now I like to do it in this third person kind of scrolled out view. It kind of, I feel, makes it a bit easier to, to see where you want it to go. And also, you're trying to get a house where there's no obstacles. So for me, it's going to be this one right here. All right, so I'm happy with the houses. Now I'm going to build it. So what I need to do now is I need to walk up to the house with my hammer selected. And again, if I take my hammer off, you're not going to see anything. But if I've got my hammer selected, you'll see the foundations. And it tells me I need 10 stones. So I need to look around and I need to pick up 10 stones. So that's what we're going to do right now. So lots. And this is why this is a great area. There are lots and lots of stones all the way along here. Now, as you start to pick the local ones up, you'll have to go further and further out. But in the future, you'll automate this process. So just know that whilst you're doing this right now, you're not going to do this forever. You will actually automate this process later on. You'll automate all of the processes later on. Everything from collecting wood, food, water, stones, all of this later will be automated. But for now, we're just looking for 10 stones. And now we have those, we can come back and start to build out this house. So we have to hit it with the left mouse click 10 times. You can just hold down the left mouse and it will just go through so you don't have to keep pressing it. And that's now done. So now we've got our foundation. Now we need eight logs. And this is where our logs come in handy. So we're going to pick up all of these logs. We need eight of them. And that is eight there. Now I'm going to pick up a couple more because now I've got nine. It says I'm carrying too much. In the bottom left, you can now see this item, uh, this icon, sorry. And you can see that it's becoming heavier and heavier. Now, if I pick up too much, I now can't move. And if I pick up far too much, now I actually can't move at all. I'm carrying too much. So I need to drop something. In order to drop something, I go into my inventory. I go to whatever is weighing the most, so I can scroll by weight. 37 kilograms. I can only carry 35. So I need to drop some of these. Now, X is to drop. I choose how many. I'm just going to drop three of them right now. All right, I've now got 12 logs on me. So I'm moving slowly, but I'm moving. And this is why I recommend moving away from that village to build your first house. 
because if you built this over there and you had all of those logs you'd, you'd have trouble moving them so we're going to hit this and it's going to build and you can see the difference between the blue and the green as it builds for the logs great so now we've got the framework in place now we need to build each individual panel yep that's right we need to build each individual panel so here we need sticks and logs now we can press e to edit and we can change it between a wall we can change it between a stone wall so that would now be a stone wall it needs different requirements we can also choose it between a door we can have a wattle wall a wooden so if, the, if we're going to do this it would be one log and eight sticks this one will be four logs this one will be one log and eight stones so you can choose what you want to build now we're going to build a wattle wall just because right now it's the cheapest and easiest to build so it's going to use up the sticks which are the easiest thing to find by the way lots and lots of sticks once all the sticks and the logs are built you'll see it so there we go now we need to build a door so we actually did have a door but we took it away so there we go we're going to put a door here instead so you can i'm just showing you how you can customize the difference between windows doors etc etc so you can you can really customize like how you want this to look and if you want to change it you can do that we're going to put the door here there we go so now we've got a simple door here with a window looking out over the water it will be very nice okay so now we just continue so we're going to use our logs and our sticks okay now you can try and get all of the resources at once or you can just pick up a few and start building it doesn't matter which order you provide the resources it will use up whatever you've got in your inventory um, but you will need to pick them up so now we're going to pick up sticks we're going to need more logs and just by picking up we're getting experience and so this experience has given us that new level of survival and we'll talk about that in a moment we'll go through that before we end this video this first introduction video but right now uh, it's telling us we need to go to bed at night uh, and we can only sleep between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. and we can sleep inside our house or with a campfire well it is getting dark so we do need to think about sleeping soon um, but we're not quite ready yet so let's uh, let's carry on picking up these sticks now some people will tell you when you're playing this game hey you should customize it to create more days in the season and you could do that I don't think you need to I think it's absolutely fine as it is um, it progresses at a good speed but yes you could you could if you wanted to um, give yourself more time where you're not feeling rushed or pressured uh, and that's something you could do you could you could increase it like five days per season so it doesn't come to winter so quick um, and the years go slower so now we've got a new building we've unlocked called the well we can now uh, we can now do a water well um, we're not going to do that just yet we're going to focus on the house for now we need to get somewhere to sleep so we need some more sticks we'll also need some more logs some more trees and we can just walk over here and we can start hitting these again with our stone axe now we're going to want to clear all of this area anyway so it's a good place to start and also when you hit these it does take stamina so be aware of that if your stamina goes too low you'll start to black out also you do get sticks i got nine sticks by hitting that tree so if I uh, hit that tree and hit it again, there we go. I'll pick up these logs because I'm going to need some logs. I'll pick up these sticks. It's basically sticks and logs you need to start with. Fantastic. So I think I should have enough now. Let's just run over to our house. Pick up our hammer by pressing number two. See if we can finish off these walls. I think I'm going to need some more sticks, but that's fine. Okay, so that's all of the exterior built. Now we can either from the outside here or we can go inside if we need to and look up. So we need some more logs. So we do two logs here. This is the attic. Okay, so now we've got the attic. Then we've got the sides here. So that takes a log and some sticks as well. And we don't have enough to finish that. Or well, we can do one, but we're not going to have enough to do this side. Or maybe we will. And we need two more sticks. And then this side we need a log and we need straw. So as you can see, we're using up another four logs because there's four roof panels 
and now we need straw and it's eight straw each side so it's 32 straw in total so now you know you need 32 straw to build a house you know how many logs you need to build a house how much stone and how many sticks so just bear that in mind if you build a house you want to have those resources to hand and don't worry there's going to be ways in the future where we can make that a lot easier for us so it it starts off painful but it gradually gets easier all right so just going to finish off this roof all right and now we need to go and get two more sticks so close if it gets dark press f you'll be able to build a torch um, now bearing in mind on the bottom right that torch will burn down so i don't tend to use it too much uh, we also need water we need food um, there's a lot of things we need to consider so let's just finish this off and there we go our house is built now that our house is built um, it's telling us about chapters so chapters is our way of progressing the game and it's what allows us to build more uh, through the next development stages so we need to do the chapters to be able to build have more buildings so completing chapters allows you to unlock the next development stage which determines the maximum number of buildings that you can construct all right so that's um that's us for now we've kind of done everything we need to do we've got our house we've got a chest now where we can start to put things so if we've got our logs we can place our logs inside our chest also stones in here so we've got this this storage we've also got somewhere to cook we've also got a bed so we've got somewhere we can go to sleep so that's all we're going to do for today that's it chapter one complete that's what we wanted to do was we wanted to build our house it's getting dark we've got our house now just before we end this episode what I want to do is just talk through the rest of the menu quickly so we understand and we don't have to go back through it in future videos. So the inventory, we've kind of covered that already. Um, you can see how many of something you've got, what the condition of it is, how much it weighs and how much it is worth. Then we can see how many coins we've got and how much our total weight is. Also, if we've clicked on something, it will give us information about this. Um, this is just, again, how much it's worth, where it can be stored, uh, the weight, and the condition uh, and it tells you what it is so a type of food um, it gives you plus five food now you actually start with some food already you start with some dried meat so I can eat this to eat I just press F and you'll see my bar going up as I start to eat but dried meat on its own doesn't really give you much so I can eat until I'm full but I've just used up 14 meat now I do weigh a lot less now which is nice but just bear that in mind, some things like oat roll will give you plus 55 food, whereas this will only give you plus 5. So we've done that, we've got our food, we need to get our health up. Health, you can actually increase your health using broadleaf plantain, and you'll see that around, you can pick it up on the floor. You can do better health later, but as a starting point, if I was to eat this, it would give me plus 2 health. So I could actually um, recover my health this way. You also recover your health while you sleep, so don't worry too much. And at the end of a season... Your food, health, and everything is automatically uh, restored. And no matter where you are at the end of a season, you'll always wake up in your bed. So just bear that in mind. If you're across the, the map doing a quest and you, the season ends, you'll, you'll end up back in your bed. And that can be frustrating sometimes. So yeah, that's your inventory. As you get more items, more clothing, you can simply just drag them across to equip them if you want to. Um, you can also, if you want to unequip and take everything off if you want to so you end up in just your pants and then I can look through here now I can either drag these onto where they go and it, it shows you when you click on them where they go or I can just press F to equip them so there we go we can see what I'm wearing um, the same with the uh, simple torch that doesn't go in a quick slot it gets equipped up here so we've got um, a hat uh, and a, a kind of scarf so there's a hat scarf a tunic arrows so if you have a bow and arrow you have to have your bow in your quick slot and you must have your arrows in your quiver gloves pants shoes and then you've got two storage options you've got a pouch and a backpack now these are what we're going to focus on early because your weight is a big problem at the start and you need to be able to carry more so this is going to be one of our initial focuses um, regardless of the questing we're, we're going to do this because this is going to make our life a lot easier Alright, so now we go on to the skills tree. For the skills tree, 
This is going to take a little bit of explaining, which is why this first video is going to be a little bit longer than the rest of them. The skills tree, there are different types of skills. There's extraction. Extraction is basically anything like gathering. So whether you're extracting trees, whether you're extracting wood, uh, whether you're extracting stone, whatever you're doing, extraction covers all of that. It's basically gathering. Uh, then we have hunting, anything to do with you killing things. Then we have farming, anything to do with you farming. We have diplomacy, um, which is anything to do with you flirting, trading, or having conversations. Survival. Um, so this is another one which is around your gathering. Um, so when you gather things um, off the floor. So this is about when you cut down a tree, uh, this is the extraction. So cutting down trees, mining, and digging. And then uh, and survival is around um, surviving and gathering. So how well you survive and how well you gather. So if you're picking up loose sticks and stones, that's survival. If you're chopping down trees, then that's extraction. And then we've got production, which is you crafting and cooking. So they're your kind of skill trees. Now, as you start to gain experience in these levels. So at the moment you can see I'm 70 out of 100 in my experience here. As I gain experience, I will be able to level up and I can choose whichever skill I want. Now these on the left are the same as these on the tree. They're the same. So tier one, tier two, tier three, and tier four. You need to do a tier one before you can open a tier two. You need to get a point in a tier two before you can get a point in a tier three, etc., etc. You don't have to complete them. You just need one point in them. So right now we're on survival. We have an option. We can either do survival knowledge, which is 5% more experience gained by survival activities. Uh, insensitive, which means 2 degrees more temperature tolerance. Or iron liver, which means 25% higher poisoning resistance. Well, we don't have to worry about the elements just yet, and we're not planning on getting poisoned. And this is a good one to, um, to progress. So we're going to increase this one, because this, by putting a point in this by pressing F, now opens up the tier 2's. So now the tier 2 tree is open. So survival sense and strong as an oak. 10% more health. This is the one we want. You can see sticks, stones, mushrooms, feathers and herbs in inspector mode. So inspector mode, just so you understand, is if I press alt, I go into what is called inspector mode. Now when I press and hold alt on the left hand side, you can see it fades out. But look at my stamina in the bottom left hand corner. My stamina goes down. And so you can't stay in this mode forever. But what this means is if we get a point in that next skill, when we press that, it will show us on the floor all of the stones and sticks and things we can interact with. So we can't see that at the moment. So we, that's a really good skill for us to, to aim towards, which is what we're going to do. So getting the survival sense is definitely next on our list. And we can do that again. It tells you how to do it. So it's a skill tree that determines how proficient you are in surviving and gathering. So in get gathering, that's what we're going to do. So we just gather stuff off the floor until we get this skill. And we're, we need 250 XP. We've got 52. So we've got a way to go. But that, that'll come quickly. So don't worry too much. And then we've got production. So these are all of the different things. And that shows you how you can increase your skill level um, to get more skills. Journal, we talked about this before, I can choose what I want to do. This is what we need to do now for chapter 2. We'll do this in the next video. We also have a story quest. So chapters, again, is what allows you to build out the sandbox mode and progress. Story quest is part of the story of the game. Uh, and then any side quests and challenges. Now, it also tells you how long you have to complete this. We've got 18 years to complete this. No rush. This one, there's no time limit. Side quests and challenges will have a time limit. The further you go down the quest line, the, the less time you normally have. Then we have completed, failed, and anything recent. So we're not doing anything right now. We're just focusing on the game. The map we've talked about already. Management is not something we need to focus on just now. This is the economic side of the game. You look at your reputation, your population, and your demand for food, water, and wood. How many buildings you have and can have what development stage you're in, any taxes you need to pay, and how many workers you've got. So this shows you your map, and on the left will show you your people, your buildings, your crops, your animals, and the demand 
of what these people are and the order of them. So what they can and can't consume um, priorities. Now, there's a lot to this and this management is down the line. We're not going to do it right now. So just know that it will come into play later, but not for the early game because there's a balance. If you start bringing people into your village, you've then got to look after them. If you don't have the houses or the resources, you're going to spend all of your time micromanaging these people. What we want to do is get our settlement to a point where we can have enough buildings that we can have houses for everybody and we can give them work to do. So one person can collect wood, one person can collect water, one person can collect food. And that way they are self-sufficient. They will look after themselves. And that's what we want to do. So we don't want to build a settlement until they can become self-sufficient. So if you imagine you need a woodcutter, you're going to, because the, the demands of people, uh, what they would require is food, water, and wood. So you need a hunter, someone to operate the well, and you need wood. That's free build, and, and you need a, a woodcutter. That's free buildings. You also need houses. Now, you can actually get away with free houses because you can put a man and a woman in a house together. You can't put two men and you can't put two women. I don't know why, but you can put a man and a woman in a house together, even if they're not married. So that's two people per house. Now, with that being said, uh, and then I, I guess they maybe get married and have a child and that would be the third person. Um, yeah, so that, that's what we're hoping for. But the idea behind this is that you, you need to have your house. You then need to have two more houses for the free people. And you need the free buildings. So already you need six buildings to get started. So we're not ready for a settlement just yet. I hope that makes sense. So we'll, we'll cover this in a later video. Now technology, this one's important. Technology is broken down into different areas. We've got building technology, we have survival technology, we have farming technology, and we have production technology, similar to the skill tree. The more that you do in this area, the more points you will acquire. The more points you acquire, the more you can build. So for now, because we built a house, we can now, we've got 20 points, we can build a well. So we develop this technology by extracting activities and building structures. Discover new schemes and learn to construct more advanced houses and storages. So we want resource, resource storage. This is a type of storage where all non-consumable resources are gathered by the workers and when the workers gather them, they're transferred here. Capacity of storages is shared. That means Instead of having individual storages like in our houses, we use a centralized storage point. You have one place to go in and come out of. This makes life easier. So one of the things we're going to do is work towards having this resource storage, but that's another building. As well as resource, uh, resource storage, there's also survival. So this is going to be our hunting lodge. And again, to develop this technology, we need to hunt animals, set traps and fish. So they're the things we need to do. By doing that, we'll get points where we can get a hunting lodge, a herbalist hut, a fishing hut. So the more you do in the game, the more you progress. Farming. We want food storage. So as well as having non-consumable, we have consumable. Exactly the same as storage, but this one's for food. So if we want to, uh, every time you have a house, there'll be a, a, a chest, as you saw, there's a chest inside the house. If that house belongs to a worker, we have to go in and we have to add food to that chest for that worker. Now, if we've got five houses, that's five houses. We need to put five lots of food. It's, it's too much. Wouldn't it be better if we had a centralized food storage where they all gather their food from? And then we only need to put it into one place. Also, if we've got somebody hunting and they're putting the food in here and then the workers are taking the food out, we've completely automated that part of our settlement which again is why the storage is so important. The resource storage and the food storage are two buildings that you must have before you even think about building a settlement. So that's why we're not worrying about management right now. But again, farming, and I'll show you how to do this later. It's part of the chapters. The chapters will take you through how to do all of this. And so we'll naturally progress. And then production technology. Um, crafting items and cooking will allow us to get the workshop, the kitchen, the smithy, the sewing hut, etc. And there's level one and then there's level two. And then we've got level three as well. Just bigger, that this more production. So that's it. That's everything we need to know at the moment about this game. And then we've got the knowledge base, which we talked about. So we're going to end the video there. That's the end of day one. Uh, if I go into the map, it tells us what the time is. It's 8 p.m. on day one. 
uh, we're in spring. So we're now going to go to sleep. You could, if you wanted to, work through the night. You're more than welcome to come outside. You can use your torch if you need to. Um, nothing really bad will happen around here, especially at night. There's nothing to worry about, but that's that's all you need to know. So on day one, we've built a house, and we understand the basics of the game. We understand the controls so far. We understand how the menu works, and that's kind of all we need to worry about right now. So with that being said, we're going to go into our house, and we're going to go to sleep on our bed, and it will say, do we want to sleep until the next day? Or do we want to sleep until the next season? Well, we don't want to sleep until the next season. We only want to sleep until the next day. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And then we'll start the next video on the next day. Thanks for joining us.